Critics at the time of its 1980 founding as an impossible dream, it has calmly confounded such opinion ever since, while going from strength to strength. To all who have come under the influence of its educational mission and principles, it has made a profound difference. Perhaps the difference. The school in question is the John Loughborough School, and since that 1980 beginning, it has seldom been out of the eye of the media, educationalists, and local authorities everywhere. The reason is not far to seek. John Loughborough is unique, with a pupil body made up entirely of black children and virtually completely black teaching staff and administration. Parents and pupils. As such, it is rightly seen as an educational pilot a pioneering approach to the teaching of black children. But this is not the school's fundamental reality. Owned and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the John Loughborough School was not established primarily as an all-black school, but as a Christian school. At most schools, assembly is a convenient way of taking care of housekeeping messages. At John Loughborough, assembly is a committed act of worship, the school being founded on Seventh-day Adventist principles. This is why pupils at John Loughborough begin and end each lesson with a prayer. This is why at the start of each school day, the staff come together in worship and to pray for each other. In such prayer is the strength of unity. Not surprisingly, given its ethos, the John Loughborough School is a byword, not only to the thousand strong London Seventh-day Adventist congregations, but to parents of all denominations who seek a good education for their children in an independent Christian school. Demand for the school's 300 places has always been very high and enrollment fully subscribed. Those 300 places are allocated in line with a policy of maintaining an Adventist student body of 70%. Such a balance, the administrators feel, will underpin the school's spiritual authority. A staff of some 33 is dedicated to the education of the 300 pupils. Their expertise is spread across 10 faculties, and it and the excellent pupil-to-teacher ratio are key factors in the school's consistent success in external examinations. Yet it was not long ago that the prospect of such successes for any of Britain's black children seemed extremely remote. The 1980s was an unsettling time for inner city Britain. Brixton, Broadwater Farm, Toxteth, it began to seem that young people might go on the rampage everywhere. There were scenes of rioting, looting, arson that were unprecedented and unprecedentedly horrific. There was murder. The papers, national and local, reported these events in the most emotive and arguably inflammatory language. all stem from the superficial impact of the long hot summers. Undoubted racism and discrimination, unemployment and inner urban decay were fueling the deadly flames. Order of a sort was restored, but it was scarcely surprising that black parents, aware that they were ethnically overrepresented in these and many other areas, were becoming increasingly concerned about their children's long-term prospects. The root anxiety was education. Black parents could well see that if their children, because disillusioned, did not achieve comparable standards in their schools with their white classmates, 
They would fall behind at the outset of their lives to become disadvantaged, not only in the job market, but as well in terms of their self-fulfillment. Because when we went to a state school, where it was also 60% of black children, it was always made to believe, and the travel spots were always the black children, and the black children were always underachieving. Before he came here, at the age of nine, he went to an all-white prep school, and the le level of racism there was just intolerable, really. That means I was paying for something to be inflicted on my son. And to me, the important thing um, I liked about the school was the black awareness and the role models so that Helena could see, well, yes, I could become a teacher too, because in her old school, it was predominantly ca Caucasian. Um, so she didn't see any role models to, you know, to address herself too. Well, my children started here from two very good schools. The education there was spot on. It was very, very good. They are good teachers. Everything was right. But the spiritual side of it was not there. And because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, I must have a spiritual side for my children. And this school help. But even during the darkest hours of the summers of discontent, positive steps were being taken to counter the fears and answer the hopes of such parents. Under the leadership of Orville Wolford, the Holloway Seventh-day Adventist Church has sown vital and example-setting seeds by establishing summer schools and evening classes for young people. During the 70s, these educational initiatives flourished to the point when raising funds for the establishment of a full-time school began to seem a viable proposition. Once born, the idea refused to die. When news came that the declining number of pupils at Sir Thomas More School were to merge with those of a sister Catholic school, the steering committee swooped. The deeds granting possession of the vacated building were signed in April 1979. The need now was to appoint the crucially important standard-setting first headmaster and there was an obvious, universally approved candidate. Orville Wilford had arrived in England intending to return to his native Trinidad with a degree that would enable him to teach. Now he found a higher priority in the new John Loughborough School. And so on April 5, 1980, the school opened its doors for the first time. We admitted 50 students, and later in the year, we increased that number to 300 in September. You would expect that that was a tremendous increase, and hence it caused a lot of interest in the community. How were we able to do it? What were the factors that remain outstanding in my mind? One of the greatest ones was the, the kind of support, the kind of teamwork that I was, able, I was able to, and benefited from around me. The church, the Sunday Adventist church, the parents, the teachers, all united solidly to make the program work. Why was it needed? Maybe it was because there was a lot of doubt as to whether the school would work in that. It turned out to be a black school. However, the children, I give them tremendous credit. They rose to the occasion. Uh, maybe they understood they got a little bit of... Uh, inspiration from the name we gave the school. We gave the name John Loughborough, uh, one of the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, a man, of, a man who was an intellectual, a, a scholar, but at the same time a very practical man, head, heart, and hand. Um, and students emulated some of these principles and did the school proud. We had tremendous support from the media, surprising to some, but not to me, because when they, when they came, what they found, they liked. And so the school got good coverage in the press and on television. We also had uh, public politicians who, who found the school of great interest and also liked what they saw when they came here. Countess of Marne Kelly, Baroness Cox, these are some of the figures who have supported the school and still do up to this time. Today, John Loughborough School is divided into two sections the junior and the senior schools. The junior school enrolls pupils from the age of 9 up to 11. Apart from being instructed by their four dedicated teachers and the student missionary in the three R's, the juniors enjoy a comprehensive syllabus of science, 
music, PE, French, environmental studies, and of course, religious education. In addition, they are offered frequent chances to go on exciting and hence thought-provoking trips. The juniors are very much encouraged to develop musical skills. Whether or not as part of the act of worship, singing is always to be enjoyed. But instrumental talents on the piano or recorder, for instance, are also given every opportunity to blossom. Progressing to the senior school, pupils pass into the care of staff splendidly able to educate them up to A-level standard. Okay, welcome to class this afternoon. As you know, today we are having our economics examination. So I would like you to please get yourself ready as we're going to call on God to give us the wisdom that we need for success. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father and God, as we begin this exam today, we call on you for guidance from above. Bless every student that he or she will remember all that... The John Lufbridge CSE pass rate is comfortably above the national level. And year upon year, its faculties and departments continue to produce excellent results. Ten faculties make up the spectrum of educational opportunity John Loughborough offers its senior pupils. Of these, the Business Studies faculty is the most recent. It provides courses in accountancy, word processing, typing, and economics. Pupils who have focused their attention on business studies make direct and immediate contributions to the community when they graduate. And civil disobedience, just sitting down somewhere, thousands of people just actually going somewhere and sitting, which caused disruption. Nothing violent. The humanities um, faculty consists of three disciplines, history, geography, and sociology. Hands-on field trips to relevant historical or environmental sites are built into the courses so as to emphasize their relevance to the contemporary world. The importance of the Bible as a textbook illuminating the natural world and our own relationship to it and one another is a typical John Loughborough emphasis within the humanities faculty. But normally we call each nail we see a nail, but each type of nail has a different name, all right? Uh, nail happens to be the common word, but... Um, these design in wood, arts and design, computer studies, home economics and music all come under the umbrella of a technology faculty that has an outstanding record of GCSE results. Zeros on that side. If we start from here, when it reaches there, we say zero. When it comes back here and goes back there, that's one complete swing. The classic trinity of physics, chemistry, and biology make up the science faculty, whose laboratories are well equipped for offering demonstration and experimental facilities to the pupils' young inquiring minds. We know that means for more, for more understanding. Right. What next would you do, Stephen? So you, you do In line with the National Curriculum's guidelines, the English faculty's core objective is to give pupils a basic proficiency in the language that will serve them in all academic and social contexts. But the English staff's enthusiasm leads them on to help pupils appreciate a wide range of literature and thence to develop their own talents in drama and creative writing. Wide reading is constantly encouraged. Bien. Écoutez-moi bien. Comprenez bien ce que je vais vous dire et ensuite répondez à mes questions. Moi, French and Spanish are the twin pillars of the modern languages faculty. Again, there is much emphasis on practical applications. To increase fluency, trips abroad are regularly organized. And the pupils are encouraged to correspond with opposite number pen friends in the Cameroons. Comment vous appelez -vous? Je m'appelle Dwayne. Vous appelez Dwayne, très bien. Et quel âge avez-vous? Four out of six plus two out of six. What would we get now? Six out of six. Six out of six, and we get the same one. But the point is still there, isn't it? Yes, right, that the total probability is equal to one. Right. The mathematics faculty emphasizes the relationship between mathematics and the world around us. 
Problem solving and investigatory work are essential techniques that pupils are taught to grasp en route to mastering the larger mathematical concepts. When we do P, most P games are good, like do football cricket, we do a little bit of volleyball, which we're doing now. We also do basketball, squash, badminton and table tennis. So it branches out into international sports and it's not very limited. At John Loughborough, pupils enjoy a complete range of sports and games activities. Most need little encouragement to plunge into cross country, football, netball, rounders, hockey. They're just as keen in the gym or developing skills at such indoor sports as table tennis, badminton and basketball. An outstanding advertisement for the school's level of sports facilities is Charles Gordon, who, as a fifth-year student, is already competing for Haringey at national club level. And at John Loughborough, the pleasures of sport and fitness can be formalised. Pupils are encouraged to sit their GCSE physical education exams. While the worship of God pervades all activities at John Loughborough, the Religious Studies and Chaplaincy Faculty offers pupils a formal course leading to the GCSE Religious Studies Examination. Under Pastor Simeon Essen, the department is committed to providing a curriculum that will lead pupils into the paths of righteousness. And I'd like to suggest this morning. So you're saying then that in as much as for this year you got a little, see things got a little bit in the middle, you want to maintain the pace throughout the year. Yeah, because it's really important because when you... John Loughborough's final faculty demonstrates the school's concern that all of its pupils should come to find themselves. Uh, if you were to do something... The personal and social education faculty has the mission of catering for the all-round personal and social development of the pupils. It is an explicit acknowledgement by the school that the spiritual and academic lessons it instills have to be married to personal insight and confidence if every student is to grow into his or her full potential. Supporting the formal faculties at John Loughborough are a series of key departments and facilities. One that is central is that necessity of any civilized society, the library. Here, pupils can access what has been described as all the memory in the world. But man cannot live by books alone. Raquel, you've chosen how many subjects? Seven. Seven. You've all got to choose seven subjects seven. at John yeah. Loughborough. That's right. The careers department is expressly there at John Loughborough to offer caring direction to those on the threshold of their adult lives. It advises third-year pupils as to their best choice of subjects for their pre-GCSE fourth and fifth years. For those approaching graduation, the department sets out the higher education options, university, training college that lies ahead, or alternatively, the commercial career possibilities. As such, the careers department is a hinge to the future. It might well be worth asking some of those who have passed through the door what influence John Loughborough has exerted on their subsequent lives. I believe that I went on to university because of what I was taught here at John Loughborough. Um, it helped me to understand the importance of education. Uh, while I was here, it was drummed into me how important education was. I didn't really take much notice of it while I was here, but um, in going on to college and university, I realised how important it is if you are to succeed. It's very competitive out there. You notice that when you get out there. And the motivation that was given to us in John of the school and the discipline also, you have to know where your priorities lie. It uh, kind of encourages you to, you know, reach for the sky. They told us that they encouraged on us and kept on telling us that the sky's the limit, that we must all, always reach for the skies. Um, they encouraged you to develop interpersonal relationships, not only with staff, but um, with the students as well. Um, and basically, I mean, while I was here, I mean, it taught me a lot of self-discipline, um, a lot of get up and go in life to take the initiative. And I mean, that did benefit me when, when I eventually left. 
I also learned that I could do all things through Christ, and um, that has helped me in all in everything that I've done. It helped me to be ambitious. Um, right from the, the second year, we were told to have some kind of idea of what we wanted to do. It encouraged us to go on further, further in our studies rather than go out to work as soon as we leave school. Uh, encouraged us to get a degree. Encouraged us to go on to university. At this school, there's a very warm and strong environment. It's very fam it's, There's a family feeling which is helpful towards everybody. You always feel that there's somebody here supporting you and pushing you on for anything that you do. As is always the case with first headmasters, the identification of the John Loughborough School with Orville Wilford was total. When, in 1985, he accepted the Seventh-day Adventist General Conference's call to become its Director of Education for Europe, there was initial consternation. But the dismay was short-lived. As Orville Wilford knew well, the foundations of the school had been truly laid. The institution was already bigger than any individual. And in Keith Davidson, a member of the London Layman's Forum, a wise head to put on the school's five-year-old shoulders was to hand. Here was a man of vision, the ability to communicate that vision, and an enthusiasm to motivate staff member and pupil alike. In many ways, the mission of the John Loughborough School is to bring boys and girls to a knowledge of God, the true foundation of all learning. For us, education ought ultimately to lead boys and girls to an understanding of God, their creator. We wish for our boys and girls to develop traditional Adventist values, especially good character development. It is our desire for them to have an environment that is caring, loving, and friendly. We wish for boys and girls to achieve good academic preparation, especially for further education and for the world of work. We seek to inculcate in our boys and girls a desire and a motivation to strive for excellence in everything that they should do. Finally, we wish for boys and girls to have a rounded and holistic educational development. That is, that they should develop spiritually, academically, and physically. The John of Paul School offers you a service of the highest quality. Well over 95% of our leavers go on to further education. And approximately 30 former pupils have studied at universities both here and abroad. Our track record is second to none. Um, since I've come to John Ashburn, I've found that my grades have improved. I found that the teachers are willing to give their own time to help you um, in the break times, which is their lunch time, and after school. And I enjoy this school because it's like very good and there's a high standard of education. And I have a lot of friends here and all the pupils, like, it's like a family. So everybody knows each other and we get on really well. Well, John Loughborough is different and from other schools because of the way teachers care for your individual needs and the way that they assess you as an individual and they grade you as an individual. Everything's done very individually and they go by what you can do. The class is the classes aren't as a group. If someone lacks behind, they will, the rest of the class can proceed, and the rest of the class, the one if there is one individual that can't do as well as the others, they will take time out, provide extra classes, and help that person. Well, at other schools, like um, there's bullying, and like people writing all over the school. We don't really have that here, and um, like in classes, there's a lot more attention and there's a lot more respect for teachers because there's no swearing and things like that. And since we have a very high standard of discipline, everybody's very respectful and I don't think there's much of that in other schools. Founded 
right towards the end of one century, the John Loughborough School has triumphed over all pessimistic predictions and now stands looking confidently towards the rapid approach of a new. It has set standards the rest of the country now wishes to emulate. And already, for thousands of pupils, parents and former students, it has, and very much for the better, made a difference. A crucial difference. The John Loughborough difference.